welcome to Close Up. Uh, I am the coordinator of the Close Community Coalition. My name is Paul McNeil. The Close Community Coalition is the coalition of Longmeadow organizing substance education for the community. Uh, we work on youth substance use, prevention and education in town. We have CDC funding uh, for the last seven years. We have three more years of funding. And one thing we really want to do is engage amazing stakeholders in the town of Longmeadow that really help make Longmeadow a wonderful place and town to raise kids. Um, our second guest ever uh, is the wonderful officer Kevin Healy from Thank Longmeadow. You. Long Meadow Police Department. Thank you. And he uh, he is the school resource officer here uh, at Long Meadow Public Schools. So, Kevin, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate for, it. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, I've got just a handful of questions here I'd love to ask you. Yeah. Um, I, you're relatively new to the school resource officer role in the last year or so. When yes, I was, I was appointed in uh, September. September. Okay, yep. great. And I've only heard awesome things about the way you you present yourself in school, the way you make Appreciate yourself it. accessible to yeah. teachers, staff, students. Um, and so I'd love to just dig a little deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Like, who let's are you? Yeah. How do you do your job? Yep, um, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so my first question is, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my, your like role. You, my, yep, my name is Kevin Healy. I'm a police officer here in Long Meadow, but I'm currently assigned as the school resource, resource officer in Long Meadow Public Schools. Uh, I primarily work out of the high school, but I serve all the other public schools in town and we're kind of uh, branching off a little bit to other places. Uh, Yeshiva Academy we're working with a little bit closer, St. Mary's School. Um, so I got my hands full, um, but I'm, I'm loving the work, so. I mean, that's because how many buildings is that total? It's like. There's there's a lot. A lot of buildings. Yeah, there's a lot of buildings, yeah. So you can't just sort of stay stationary at no, the high school, I, yeah, you're moving I, around. Yeah, I move around, yeah. I like to check in with the schools throughout the week, check in with, I got a close relationship with the principals, so. Yeah, we work, we work closely. So elementary schools in Longmeadow, middle schools, yep. high school, high school, and then Yeshiva St. Mary's. Did you say? Yeah, we're working, we're starting to work a little bit closer with them too, because you know they they have classes in there. So I'm kind of just trying to make my face more available to them. Okay, and like what yeah. what do you what do you do sort of day to day? Like what what does your role entail? Yeah, so I'm I serve as more of a, the bridge between the the schools and, and the police department. Um, you know, I serve as kind of like an informal counselor with students. Um, you know, a lot of issues that uh, come up in the schools, uh, I deal with them and just forming relationships with, with the students and being in the schools is just important, so. I've I'm noticed, here. so I'm, you know, I'm not a typical teacher, I'm not a typical administrator. Yeah. I'm sort of on the outside looking in is because I'm a public health professional managing a grant that happens to be, you know, fiscally managed by the school district yeah. and, and the town at large, but uh, I'm, I, I have a little bit of an outside perspective, but I, something I've noticed about this, t this school district and its local law enforcement or its local police department is incredibly close relationship that, that I've, I've witnessed. I, I don't know yeah. the deep inner workings of the relationship, but good relationship, warm relationship, consistent, open communication. I just, I've been really impressed. With yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly engaged. We're a really community oriented police department. That's how, that's how we like to operate. And yeah, and, I, and that's true. Actually, people in town, parents, folks in town, every time I see the, the Long Meadow Police Department um, tables at like the Long Meadow Pride Festival or uh, the, they used to have the Long Meadow, was it Long Meadow Days, which is now like the Long Meadow Fall Fest. But right. every time I see your table, it's just always super friendly yeah. people. Um, super engaging, just warm, and, and I just, I've always appreciated working with you and your PD. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so you, how long have you worked in the town of Longmeadow? Do you live in Longmeadow? I don't, okay. uh, no. I live in East Longmeadow, but I've been here for... The enemy. Yes, the enemy, yeah. yes. Um, I've been <laughs> Wait here a second, th you have a twin. I do. Who is a police officer in East Longmeadow. No, He's school resource yes. officer yep. in East Longmeadow. Don't tell me he lives in Longmeadow. No, okay. he does we, okay. we actually live together. Uh, oh so yeah, God. yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have a, is he identical? We're identical. What's his name? Mike. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. How do I know I'm not interviewing Mike? You might not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this might be Mike. Yeah. Breaking news, this might be Mike Healy. Um, I totally forgot about, that was like something very special and unique about your role here. So your brother is a police officer, East Longmeadow. You both live in East Longmeadow. Mm -hmm. He is the school resource officer in East Longmeadow. Right. That is nuts. Yeah, he's actually been here before, and I've gone to his schools, and okay. yeah, we work we work closely together too. Well, when one of you's sick, you can just yeah, we just switch. Yeah, 
That's, it's a bad joke, but I appreciate you rolling with it. Um, you, so you live in East Longmeadow. How long have you worked in Longmeadow? I've been here for three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah. And how, as far as your experience so far here, because that's, that's a good chunk so far, what would you be most proud of in the, the town that you work in or the town that you serve? It's, a, it's really community oriented. I mean, just being in the role as a school resource officer, we have really passionate educators, I've mm -hmm. noticed. Um, they not only want to see you do good in school, but beyond school. Um, I see that a lot in, in working with the schools. It's, it's like the professionals that work here sort of always going above and beyond. To, yeah. It's like I, I, I thought of a few years ago, I thought of it as like the whole child. So like W-H-O-L-E, where like they care about academics. It's a very academically right. challenging and there's really high expectations in this this district, but huge commitment to the social emotional learning and just kids yeah, developing a good yeah. sense of self, self-esteem, um, confidence, and I, I totally agree with that. Um, as far as keeping young people in Longmeadow safe and healthy, what do you think is working? Like, what's going well? Um, you know, we have the substance abuse coordinator, uh, Shelly Warren. She does great work in the schools. Um, you know, we have the DART team in, in Longmeadow. Uh, DART is Drug Addiction Response Team? Yes. Like or I'm, Recovery Team. Or recovery. Yes. D drug Addiction Recovery yeah. Team. Yeah. And that's cool. led by uh, Sergeant Lombardi and Lieutenant Drakowski. They do a great job. Um, all the officers here are CIT trained, uh, crisis intervention trained. Okay. Um, so we do, you know. Can you tell me a little bit more, like what is CIT, what is DART, like how do, how do they respond to incidents in a different way than a... We do a lot of follow-up work. Uh, a lot of the calls that we go on require extra follow-up work in dealing with people, you know, kind of just on initial calls, you know, when the call clears up and, you know, the person that we're dealing with may need services after the call. Mm. Uh, and we, we, we do a lot to try and make sure that, that their needs are, are met. So not just like one and done interactions. Yeah, we don't like to brush up. it under the rug. You know, yeah. we, we want to make sure that that somebody's taken care of if they need if they need services. And CIT is like a little bit more like mental health response. Yeah, so like right. If someone's having a mental health crisis, you guys are trained and sensitive to yeah, that experience. Yeah, we, we you know we focus big on on de-escalation. It's it's big with CIT training and it's big in policing in general, um, and and we incorporate that a lot. A, a lot of it is just in, in, in how you talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's hearing their side of what's going on and, and, and talking to them like, like they're human. I got pulled over by an East Hampton, a team of East Hampton police mm -hmm. last week. I, was gonna, I told you I was going to tell you the story. Yeah. Maybe, I can, maybe I can tell yeah, it, now, it relatively quickly. But I, did not, I was not driving. So I had an Uber. This is a really long story, but the short version of it is I was playing basketball two weeks ago, which no one over the age of 40 should be playing basketball. That's my tip, except for LeBron James. He can <laughs> yeah, keep going. Yeah, he can do it. Um, I came down after a rebound, rolled my ankle so bad. It was like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I had to go to the ER. It was yeah. so swollen. I couldn't walk. It was an incredible pain. So I went to, went to the emergency department in Northampton, Mass. Uh, they took amazing care of me. It was relatively quick, four hours. But I had to get an Uber on the way home. So I live you know, 12 minutes from the hospital. Yeah. And I had to get an Uber at like 12.30 in the morning. There weren't a ton of options, but the guy who showed up, picked me up, he was running a little, a little late, which was odd, but whatever, and we're, we're driving home, uh, and he seemed maybe a little erratic the way he was driving, a little bit like fast and slow, fast and slow. Yeah. I wasn't thinking anything of it. I was on crutches, I had my ankle wrapped up, I wasn't too concerned. I just wanted to get home safe and sound. And we got to the center of East Hampton, he gets pulled over, uh, this is after he was driving through like a dozen parking spaces that kind of looked like there's, there was no one in town. Yeah. They looked like maybe they maybe were part of the lane. Anyways, he drove through a bunch of parking spaces. The police that were in the center of town saw him do this. They pulled him over. Um, this story is way longer than I'm going to make it right now. But he, he got pulled over. He was approached by local police there. And I've had really good interactions with my local PD in East Hampton. The way that they approached him it just seemed, it seemed like this has got to be CIT. The way that they were talking with him, and it was very much about like checking in with him and how he was doing, right. and like, are you in a safe place? Like they they weren't looking to like catch him Jam being him bad. Yeah, right. it was so. It was just like a really thoughtful way to engage with my driver. Right. It turns out he was he was he was really drunk, mm. and that I happens. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and I he actually had an, like an open container of like a cocktail right at his feet was not driving safe because he was under the influence of alcohol. Right. And one of the other officers who pulled in, um, 
offered to give me a ride home, which I did not think I was going home on a police cruiser that night, but I, I'm grateful that I did. They arrested was, the, the Uber driver? I imagine they did. I yeah. mean, he was just beginning the road sobriety test, and I, it did not look like it was going very well. But he was, I think, super you know, nervous and scared because right. he was caught doing something very dangerous and right. very illegal. But I was just super impressed. I mean, the, the, the officers that responded could have just been very like, we got to get this guy off the road. They could have been a lot more, right. I guess, like punitive and gotcha. And they were not. They were so thoughtful. And I just was like, it made me grateful for my local PD. It made me grateful for the interactions I've had with Long Meadows PD. I just think there's really good people doing really good work. Yeah, no, I want to thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I hope that wasn't the longest version. No. There's a much longer version of that story, but drunk driver, center of town. We'll talk after. Yeah, we'll talk after. Yeah. yeah. Uber charged me a lot of money. They thought it was a two and a half hour ride, which I thought was Yikes. hilarious. They cleared it up. Um, Uber, you did a great job responding. Thank you. Um, let's see. OK, so what's not working? You mentioned the sense of community, but what's, what's, what needs to change? Yeah, I, I be, with our students, I, a lot of peer pressure I've noticed. You know, a lot of kids react on how other kids react. You know, I spend a lot of time in the halls, and you can kind of see it. And, you know, when students get in trouble, if I check in with them, it's more uh, there's pressure from a friend to do it or a friend was acting a certain way. And so I think more having a little personal accountability is, is good. Okay. Yeah. So peer pressure is real. It's real. Yeah, you see it. And so the it. norm, I feel like, in this town is super high achieving academically. Right. And also, like, pretty high achieving with after school stuff. If it's a lot of kids are in, involved in sports yeah. or, like, other clubs or activities, but just really high achieving students is the norm, it seems. So I feel like that pressure can lead into some maybe unhealthy coping skills that if those unhealthy coping skills become the norm, that's, like, a really tough pressure, I think, to deal with, right. with those students. As far as, like, um, substance addiction or substance use prevention. Uh, what do you think, what concerns do you have about the teenagers you've been working with the last few years? The accessibility to, to, to certain drugs, you know, vaping is big and it just seems, you know, it's easy to get stuff through social media and, you know, adults don't find out about it as easy, but mm. it's, it, it's a concern on my end. Social media. In obviously increasing access to substances. Right. Um, I, something I've heard from just in student focus groups was like their parents a lot of times just have quite a bit of alcohol in the house. So like making sure that parents are storing and, and, and keeping alcohol away and right. safe from See, teenagers. It's, you know, a lot of these kids can access fake IDs. A lot of them look 21. Yeah, no, kids are looking, yeah. they're looking, they're looking old right. these days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, access and resources for sure can be an issue. Um, I have a question about stress. So you went to high school, am I, I correct? Okay, I you did. didn't skip a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to ask folks on the show, uh, when you were in high school, like, what stressed you out, and like, how did you manage it? Yeah, um, I would say that the, the workload, you know, having like five to seven classes, and kind of just, you know, growing up and, and, and wanting to fit in, and it's 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 a lot in a high schooler. It's mm. a lot. Um, no, so I was man managing all the class. I remember college is what, like four classes? Yeah, it's four or five classes. And high school seven or eight or something. Right. It's, like, it's just yeah, a lot. I think I had like seven, six or seven classes a day in high school. It's, 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 a, lot. it's a lot. Yeah. So managing that huge load. Right. Um, how did you manage it? How did you manage your stress? Uh, I had a, you know, my brother, um, okay. you know, being in high school together, um, you know, close group of friends and just. Same social group. Yeah, we had the same social group. Um, yeah. Were they a good influence, you think, the kids you came up with? Yeah, I would say they're a good influence on me, yeah. Did you grow up in East Longmont? I did. Oh, that's I awesome. I did, yeah. Okay. So you're a local kid. I am. I mean, you're not a kid anymore, Kevin. Right. You're, I'm an adult. You're, you're mid a big th boy. Mid-30s now. <laughs> you're big. Yeah. Um, and he stuck around in East Longmont. Yes. How, is it hard for your brother? There's like serving... Because I've... I, some people, I, I feel like it would be hard to like serve the town that yeah, I, you, you I, were I, raised I don't in. think it is. I mean, I, you know, I... Him and I are together so much, and you know, when we're out, he sees former students, and the reaction is always positive. He's you know, there's not like negative. He doesn't have negative interactions with people in the town that that he works. In. I think this says a lot about him too. It does, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, how about in high school? Were you physically active? Like, did you do a sport or anything? Like, how did was, you stay wasn't, physically? Yeah, I wasn't super active in high school. Um, I ran track a little bit. Okay. Um, but I wasn't super into 
you know, sports when I was in high school. I think my, my interest peaked in sports la later uh, at a later point in life. Yeah. Cool. Staying physically active. I like to ask guests about sort of how did they manage their stress in high school? Because this is something that high schoolers obviously are now going through. Right. Um, and parents that see these clips, uh, they're going to want to support their kids making healthy choices around physical activity or like what was your... I like to ask people nat their natural high, like what was the thing that you did in high school that was really healthy, pro-social coping, or just a way to Yeah, I was, you know, I was definitely like a, a social person in high school, so I think kind of just being with my friends, and I had like a really, you know, the neighborhood I grew up in had a lot of kids from the high school that I went with, okay. so we were always hanging out so on the weekends and, and after school, and it's kind of just, you know, my natural high was just hanging out with my friends. Socializing with Yeah, buddies. socializing, yeah. That's cool, and it was a good group. It was. I feel like, yeah, COVID must have really influenced kids that were in key developmental stages as far as socializing, because I've heard in the last year or two some feedback from students around like, people don't hang out anymore. And yeah, I think it, was, it just sort of, it bled into, you know, kids' social scenes after COVID, and it, I really hope that's shifting back or changing back, because yeah, it's hope so I, healthy. It is, yeah, yeah, you know, I've talked to, teachers too and they've noticed that teachers and principals have have seen the shift of just kids not hanging out as much anymore yeah they don't i mean that can be a, a negative yeah. thing you know if your peer group is doing a lot of unhealthy things but right. if they're doing really wonderful healthy things it's it's just a huge missed opportunity all right i'm going to ask you about someone who motivated you so who's someone who had a really profound impact on your life as you were growing up doesn't have to be a parent doesn't have to be a teacher but is there like any other people in between those relationships that motivated you or inspired you? Yeah, I, I, I can think of my uncle. He was a, a police officer. Um, he's passed now, but I realized growing up he was played a big role in my life, and you know he kind of inspired me to go down the road of, of being a police officer. Um, you know, because you just, had no one, dad and mom or d parents weren't in law enforcement. They weren't in law Your enforcement. Uncle was. No, yeah, my uncle was, and you know he was just someone I, I, I could talk to and approach and just you know. He was like more my more my friend than like a you know, he's like you know just really important figure in my life and yeah so he was he, active he cared he was yeah he was just active easy to, easy to talk to he was funny and he just you know he made a big big impact on my life the things that you're saying weirdly enough I've heard students say exactly about you so oh, you're doing you're yeah. doing good yeah your perfect. uncle be love your uncle be it. proud love to hear it what's what was his name Billy Billy Kelly Billy Kelly yep. East Longmeadow. He was Springfield. Springfield. Yeah, he worked for Springfield uh, PD for 20 years. Holy smokes! Yeah. Did you have to retire. Or? He passed uh, before you could see retirement, but you know, I talk to a lot of guys that work in Springfield, and you know, they tell me the stories about him of, of what a great guy he was. So, I'm trying to carry on his legacy a little bit and yeah. here. So 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, it's a long time. And Springfield's not. It's not an not easy a place. To, it's not village. an easy it's place like to work. A yeah. Big, a big. Yeah. Big area. Um. Well. Uncle, Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy. I love that. Yeah. Um, I, I think I only have one more question. Um, or two more questions. All right. This is a, this is a little more personal, mm -hmm. but like, what should we consume? Meaning, what are three of your favorite things that you've been reading or watching or listening to podcasts, something like that? Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big reader, but I'm I'm big into to Netflix and watching shows. Okay. I'm I'm just about to start. Season four of, of Breaking Bad. Okay. Um, so you're a little late to Breaking Bad. I'm, very, I'm 10 years late to Breaking Bad. <laughs> 10 um, years. Yeah. So. But so good. Like, what are the best It's a great shows show. Ever. I'm yeah. super addicted to it. And I think it's just kind of funny, like, being a police officer and working in a school. And Watching the main character is a chemistry teacher who begins to sell drugs. And it's just. Mm -hmm. It's a great, it's a great show. I love it. Um, Hopefully, there aren't too many Jessies that go to high school here. Yeah, I have not seen Jesse Pinkman around the school, okay. so <laughs> I think no we're Pinkman. yeah, we're we're good there. Um, <laughs> okay, so you're Breaking Bad. Yeah, Anything Breaking else? Bad. Uh, I'd say for TV shows, uh, Two and a Half Men is classic. Great show. I think it makes like the me number laugh. One rated show for like yeah, ever. I always put it on. It's it's hilarious. Charlie Sheen is hilarious. Um, God, I, I think I got to pick a movie on this. On this last one, okay. I think I'm gonna yeah. pick uh, the new Batman that came out a couple years ago. Which one's the? You haven't seen it. Is it the Joker one? No, no. Okay. Joker's its own separate movie. It's Bat its own thing. Yep. Uh, not Batman Returns. No, no, no. The new one that came Dark out. Dark Knight. Too, no, not Shoot. Dark Knight. That's with Christian Bale. This is with Robert Pattinson. He oh, plays. Oh, I Bat didn't see that one. Okay. Oh, you gotta see it. You did. You he, dig it. Oh, I love it. You okay. gotta put three hours aside. It's a long movie, but okay. Great movie. Great acting. It's it's awesome. I'll yeah. check it out. I yeah, love, I love it. Was it 
Christopher Nolan did The Dark Knight. Christopher one? Nolan did Dark Knight. That was like yes. one of the coolest movies I'd ever seen. It's a great movie. So I'm going to check this one great out. Great movie. Who yeah. directed the most, the most recent one? It's on the tip of my tongue. Okay, I forget. Yeah. I'll, I'll show I'll it. I'll, it I'll, yeah. I'll, okay. Yeah. The most recent Batman. With uh, the Rob kid from... Twilight. Twilight, okay. Robert yeah. Pattinson. Crushes the role. He's, he's awesome. Check, I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, Officer Healy, is there anything important you think I missed? Uh, what do you think parents need to know raising kids in Longmont? Yeah, it's a, they it's, might not it's, know. A, it's just a great town. To, like you said, academics, students are great. Sports, they succeed. Uh, it's a great town. Uh, we have a good police department, great resources. It's, it's a great place to live. Great place to, li great place to live, great place to raise kids. Yeah. Um, and you're a huge part of that. So I want to thank you for I being am. part I of the show. I am. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey. I appreciate you having me. You know, because you're such a great guy, Officer Healy, you get to have Excellent. a mug that I get says, my own mug. You do, and it's Thank such you. a special mug that the inside plastic would probably melt if you put something hot in it. So maybe just water I'm, I'm a juice. nice coffee guy, so I'll put ice coffee Oh, that's coffee actually perfect for yeah. iced coffee. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank and you. I want to thank LCTV for helping us out today and filming this episode of Close Up. And thanks to all the folks out, out there and at home watching and listening on the podcast. Uh, Thanks for watching Close Up, and thanks for learning about what makes Longmeadow a great place to raise kids. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>